Welcome to Espresso Jams, short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, life, and more. And now, here's your host, Joe Max. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Espresso Jams. Today, I have the pleasure of having Van Daughtry with us. He is the owner, CEO of Van Daughtry Consulting, and he is a business and franchise broker. So we, Van, let me introduce you to everybody. Everybody, this is Van. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be a part of your uh, show, Joe. Thank you very much oh, for having me. I, I am honored to have you here, man. It, it's great. And uh, Van and I have known each other for quite a while, and we get talking about business almost all the time. And yeah. we we're talking about franchises the other day. And wondering, you know, if you're thinking about a franchise, is that something you should be thinking about? Is a franchise right for you? And, and Van is the expert on a subject like that. So I'm going to pass that baton over to Van. Well, sure. Well, thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, so I can speak to that uh, on a couple of different levels. I, I'm a former franchise owner myself. Uh, I owned... Uh, Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, the nation's second largest tax franchise. I owned um, uh, nearly 20 locations uh, prior to my exit uh, three years ago. Um, I had locations in North Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee at one point, and um, did that for 11 years and really learned a lot from my experience with that. And uh, after exiting from that, um, in searching for what I wanted my next move to be, I knew that I loved, uh, you know, working in franchising and to, I thought to myself, you know, how can I best leverage that into an, another career? And so now what I do is I help people who are considering their next business move, you know, and if, if that includes franchising, I love sitting down with people and going through that exercise of um, what would it be like to be a franchise owner? So how, how do people come to think that maybe a franchise is right for me? Sure, uh, great question. Um, I like to use the, the phrase that to me, a franchise is a business in a box. Uh, what you're getting when you buy into a, a franchise concept or a franchise system, hopefully is uh, a developed set of uh, guidelines that the franchisor, uh, which is the, the the brand, if you will, of, of a particular company, uh, what they've developed and what they believe is the best system uh, for being successful uh, in in their company, and it's it's a set of you know uh, rules to follow, systems to use, uh, brand logos. Uh, you know, all the different things that make up a, a particular brand. And so um, that's, that's kind of what a, a franchise is in a, in a quick nutshell. So there's, there's two ways of, of thinking. Now, somebody told me this a while ago. You, could, you start a business from scratch. You bootstrap it up, and it's going to take time, and it's going to take money. Uh, more, maybe perhaps more time and less money if you go the franchise route you're looking at less time to get up and running because they have those processes and systems, but you're paying the money. So you're really, are you really paying the money to save the time and, and get that business system? Yes. I, I, I think that's a great way to look at it, Joe. Um, uh, you, you know, they have proven out what they believe is the best way to, to run their brand or represent their brand. And so, uh, they've put in a lot of the work prior to, you know, uh, uh, an owner coming in. So uh, one way to look at things uh, as, as someone looking at going into uh, their own business uh, venture is, do I want to be an independent or do I want to buy into a franchise system? And so as an independent, you are having to go out and really create the wheel itself mm. Uh, you're having to go out and doing the marketing and establishing your brand and and getting your presence out there and all that sort of thing, setting up your own systems. Whereas uh, with a franchise, 
pretty much all of that is in place already. And, so yes, yeah, that's what so, you're doing. So they've already done the work and they may even have decades, depending on the franchise, they may have decades of experience that you exactly. get to you get to profit from right from day one, even before you open the doors. That's right. That's right. So would it be a, a good option for a first time business owner, for example? <laughs> I would say, I would say in most cases, yes. So what I like to do, uh, Joe, when people come to me or they're exploring, you know, the, the thoughts of owning their own business, and perhaps, as you said, they've never uh, been a part of uh, business ownership. In more cases than not, um, going with a franchise, those systems are in place. You've got a roadmap to follow. You've got people uh, at the corporate level of those brands guiding, giving you guidance and uh, instruction on how to do things and, and whatnot. And so it, it's a little safer route to, to go if you're a first time buyer to go with a franchise. Now, conversely, uh, and we, you know, we, we can dive into this a little deeper. Um, when I'm sitting down with folks and talking about franchising, I like to say that if you don't play nicely in the sandbox uh, of of uh, of a franchise, it may not work for you. And when I when I say that, what I mean is that um, there's not as much room for creativity uh, in in the operations and ownership of a franchise as if you are the sole owner uh, and an independent. Um, Franchises want it done their way, following their rules and, and their guidelines because they believe they have a system uh, in place that's set, set up uh, to set you up for, uh, you know, success. Um, so if, if you're not a great rule follower, um, you may want to take a second thought or, or really think hard about a franchise system. Well, I think one of the great things about your business, Van, is that you represent hundreds of different franchises and also you represent businesses. So if someone wanted to buy a business, for example, and maybe not a franchise, but wanted to buy a business, you, you perform the functions of a traditional, if I could say that, business broker. Is that right? That's, that's right. And, and thanks for, for making that distinction. Um, so uh, over the course of my career and lifetime, I've, I've been both part of a family business or a couple of family businesses, uh, which were independents. Uh, I've also been a franchise owner. And typically out in, in the, the world, uh, most people either pra practice franchise brokerage or business brokerage. And because of my, my background, I hated to, to only do one or the other. Typically as a, as a, business broker, you're typically on the sell side of the transaction, which means you're usually representing the seller more often than not. Although I, I also can do buy side representation, which means if someone says, for example, hey, go out and find me a pest control business or a roofing company. I, I currently have one and I want to expand uh, by acquisition. You know, I, I can help with that. Uh, on the franchise side, that's typically on more of the buy side. And it's for, as we said, people who maybe are looking for that system to get into. And so uh, th there are, I, I can represent the sale, uh, you know, as, I can also represent the sale of franchises oh, as well, but typically side. that is on the purchase side. Okay. Hey, we have covered a lot of ground pretty quickly here. <laughs> yeah. Um, what might you say would be a big rock takeaway for the listeners today? Sure. Uh, don't enter into the purchase of a business or a franchise lightly. Uh, really consult with professionals uh, or, or people that you trust, whether it be a broker like myself, uh, your financial planner, your CPA, or, or people, people surrounding you who know you well and know how what your strengths and weaknesses are and, and um, 
you know, don't just go for a quick sales pitch, really be deliberate about your research, do your due diligence about a business or a franchise brand, whatever it may be to make sure it's the right fit. That's what a good broker. And that's what I try to do is the, the proverbial, not putting the square peg in the round hole. If, uh, if it's just not a good fit, don't, don't enter into it. Just keep, keep looking, be patient and the right thing will come up, come along. Fantastic. That is awesome advice. And Van, how might someone get in touch with you if they want to know more or just want to have a casual conversation about business sure. and, and purchasing businesses or franchises? Well, sure. Thanks, Joe. And, and by the way, for, for how I operate, uh, I give a ton of my time, my consulting time away. Uh, you know, most brokers uh, such as myself, uh, typically only get paid uh, unless it's a straight up consulting arrangement. They typically get paid at some sort of exit event. Hmm. Uh, so I'm happy to sit down with people and, and uh, you know, have a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I am based here in the triangle, but I'm, I'm willing to represent people for uh, opportunities outside of North Carolina as well. Um, so my uh, website is www vdconsulting.com and we'll have that down below so don't worry about the spelling sure sure uh phone number uh, my work work number is 919-780-9144 and uh email address is van that's v-a-n at vdconsulting.com and I also uh, encourage anyone to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, it's uh, my uh, having a unique name uh, helps. So uh, Van, <laughs> Van Daughtry uh, is my profile, V-A-N-D-A-U-G-H-T-R-Y. Perfect. Very good, Van. And thank you for being a guest. And it's great seeing you. Great talking with you. This was great, Joe. Thank you. This was a wonderful uh, opportunity. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.